We are episode 20, Diagnosing Motherboard Issues. I have your technology questions answered, and I'm your host, Steve Smith, a.k.a. Z-Axis, and we are February 13th, 2011. Tomorrow is St. Valentine's Day. Don't forget that you will die from somebody if you have a significant other. And today we'll be talking about diagnosing your motherboard woes, oh no's, and oh my gods. And first, we are going to explain something that most of you don't know but does exist and happens every time you turn your computer on. It is called posts. Power on, self-test. And if your computer fails, you're going to be, oh no, oh my god, oh what the heck happened here? And somewhere around the world, somewhere right now, somebody is saying it right now, probably crying on their counter, wondering what they have done today. Now, we're going to be going one way in diagnosis, but there are two ways to diagnose a computer. Of course, you're going to have to go my way if the first way doesn't work. It is called the error code index. There are two ways to figure it out. If you have a diagnostic clip or tool on your motherboard or pluggable into the motherboard, all you have to do is go into the manual and it will explain what it means or call the technical support of the manufacturer and they'll tell you what it means. They may actually tell you to send it in or send you a brand new board to replace it. Now, if you have the sound, the audio, the audio version, and you don't have a speaker plugged into it, you will have to plug a speaker into it to listen to it. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck doing it my way. Now we're going to be called doing something called a diagnostic post. And this means, of all things, you're going to need the CPU plugged, the RAM plugged, the power supply plugged, connected correctly, please. And if you do not have an onboard graphics card, you're going to have to put one into the PCI Express slot. Only one, not two, please, if you have any of those mod boxes like I do. And yes, I know the screen is shaking. It's the base. I didn't plug the computer screen into the wall yet. Now, to do the diagnostic test, please let me remind you, you only want to have the motherboard, the RAM, the processor, graphics card if no on board, and the power supply, and nothing else. You're going to disconnect everything else. I don't care if it's USB. I don't care if it's Firewire. IDE, SATA, everything gotta go like a sale. Get rid of everything, take it out of the box, make sure there's no shorting issues with any other thing. This is a diagnostic post, people. We need to do it right. Now, after you have all this ready and done, you're gonna plug it into the wall and you're gonna try to start your computer. At this point, you got two choices. A, it works. B, it fails. Now, we're just going to assume for the first part that we are lucky sons of bitches and that it actually does work. This means you have a shorting issue with one of your hardwares. You either have bad cables, misplugged cables, or one of your hard drives, optical drives, USB drives, firewire drives, I don't care which one it is, has failed. Basically, this is how you're going to diagnose each part, of your, each part of the hardware. Being that most hardware is general and non-specific to any motherboard type, you can use one or two computers to do this. I use two. One to see if it works on my computer. Two to see if it works at all. So plug it into two computers if you're able to, but if you have only one, you're going to do it the way I'm going to explain it. Now, plug it one at a time, every single one of them. Anything that doesn't work, put aside. You're going to replace it. You may have one, you may have two, you may have all that don't work. So don't be surprised if you have to replace some things. Now, because posts actually passed at this point, supposedly, we are going to assume that one of those parts or cables has failed. So, like anything, you test one at a time, and you're going to change the cable with no good cables, and test them one at a time again. Now, if anything fails, or any cables fail, put it aside, replace it, don't cry over it, it's only hardware. Now, if any of those don't work, like I said, replace it. If they all work, we are fine. Probably a bad cable, probably a bad disconnection. Again, let me remind you to plug cables in correctly, firmly, with equal force along the whole thing, and you will avoid issues like this. Now, let's say the diagnostic post failed. Now, this can be multiple things. It could be bad capacitors. It could be bad RAM, bad CPU, bad power supply, most often RAM processor or power supply. It could be bad sound cards, integrated on board graphics cards, the graphics cards, misplugged devices from the power supply into the computer. It could be a bunch of things. Now, to do a diagnostic 
test of the computer we're gonna start in the order that I'm gonna say the first and most possible of everything that can possibly happen is the power supply you're gonna replace the power supply with something you know that actually works from a different computer if you need to or you can buy a new one but next week I'll explain how to determine if the brand new one actually works or is defective or ready use the power supply that you know that works plug it into the computer if the power supply that you put in does not work in this computer because the computer doesn't want to start you may now safely assume that it's not the power supply now if you have multiple bars of RAM remove every single one of them but one like the other hardware one at a time every single one of them if any of them fail and the computer passes on the other ones yes so found the problem replace the defective RAM and that's it don't cry again now if it's not the RAM the issue try the graphics card if you had one that plugged into the PI PCI Express slot. Replace it with another one that you know works. At this point, the amount of memory the graphics card is not related to the problem. All you need to do is make sure it's not the graphics card. Now, if it is the graphics card, or you think it's the graphics card, the easy way to figure this out is to put it into another computer that know it works. Now, if it fails in the other computer, the graphics card's to change. If it passes in the other computer and it still doesn't start in this computer, you may now safely assume it's the CPU. At this point, the only way to test if it's the CPU is through the use of what I call a second computer. If you have another computer in your house that uses the same socket size processor, you're in luck. Otherwise, you're going to have to bring it to a friend. At this point, plug into another computer, making sure none of the pins underneath the CPU are actually bent or defective or torn off or anything. Be careful with the CPU. Clean it, no using water. Clean the fan, no using water. Rubbing it all the thermal paste off and putting a paper thin amount of thermal paste on it you don't have to do it to do a test but you do need to do it to put it in permanently now if the CPU works in another computer not in this computer you may now safely assume it may be the motherboard and there are numerous causes of this problem the first one you may have an error issue with the BIOS at this point all you need to do is call a CMOS reset to do this depending on the board you may have a button yeah, if you have a button or if you have the jumper and please remind you jumper not good to tips of fingers be very careful remove the battery unplug from the wall in the reverse order please move the pin from 1 2 to 2 3 for 10 seconds or longer put pin 2 3 back to 1 2 put the battery back in plug into the wall and retry. If it does work, you had an error issue with the BIOS that was temporary, and the computer will start, and all you have to do is put everything back together, and you will be fine. Now, if it doesn't work, you can do it again and wait for 12 hours, 24 hours. But I'm saying that after one hour, if it still doesn't work, your motherboard does have a significant issue. You can check all over, you can see if it's capacitors or anything. Some of them, if they're bloated, sometimes defective batch of hardware. If it is not the case or you cannot determine this, please call the technical department of the manufacturer. If the motherboard is less than three years old from date of manufacture and not from date of purchase, and it is not your fault, they will ask you to send the motherboard to an RMA department. They will require you to have an RMA number. They will demand the serial number of your board. You will send it at your costs and insured, otherwise they may refuse it, and please send it in a box. Any auxiliary hardware, manuals, CDs, and all that, you will retain in your possession. Do not send them. You will not get them back. Now, if it wasn't your fault, they'll send you a repaired or brand new motherboard at their cost, insured towards you. This is why it's fair. And all you have to do is put everything back together, and you'll be fine. You do not have, oh, by the way, some good news, if you have the same motherboard, you do not have to reinstall the operating system. You simply need to plug everything back in and the computer will work fine. If the motherboard you had is not a model that they ca currently offer anymore, but it was still in warranty, they may send you a motherboard of either identical spec or better spec, usually trying to keep the same CPU and RAM profile so that you don't have to replace everything, and they will send you one of the equal costs. At this point, you may have to reinstall your operating system. Just another reason to go Linux, people, because you don't have to reinstall the motherboard if you have Linux. Now, at this point, 
everything is done. Everything else that you could possibly try to diagnose computer is not doable unless you had the right hardware, which means you would have to send it to a technician like me. Now what do I tell you to do? This is exactly what I'm going to tell you to do. You are going to listen, and there are probably going to be people working for these companies pissed off, and I don't care, because I have never gotten any good service from A. Staples and Barongro. B. Geek Squad. By the way, I fixed so many pieces of computer from Geek Squad, because they basically have the crappiest third-party hardware I've ever seen in my life. Do not buy their UPS. Please do yourself your favor. Buy ABC. Now, do not bring it to Future Shop. Best Buy or any grand spanking long huge place. Bring it to places like Microbytes and Mastervox or any other small little computer store with a good reputable name. And I tell you this for one important reason. They are required to have a background in computer sciences and have MSCE certification, Microsoft certification, so that they may be able to diagnose your computer and they will have communication with other technicians just in case they've seen a problem for the first time. Now, if you sent your board to a technician and not to the RMA department, they may tell you to send it to your RMA department, at which case, don't have to worry about it. You now know the board is defective. You will probably get a new one in the mail. It does take two to four weeks, people. Don't worry about it. Next week, like I said, we will be explaining how to determine if your power supply is defective. Now, as usual, people, if you want to send your comments, stories, suggestions, or questions, send it to tqa at zedaxis.net or www.zedaxis.net. Show notes on YouTube will be in the links down below. And if you have any other comments that you want to put on my channel, yeah, again, down below. And if you have anything to send me, please send it between before Friday night, midnight, Eastern Time. Otherwise, I can't put it into the show. I start writing these crazy papers on Friday night when I get home. Now, like I said, let's see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe. I am on YouTube, iTunes, and FeedBurner. You can get all the information on my website, and all the information will be in the credits of this show. So until next week, have a great week, and this has been your Technology Questions Answered.